Thanks for coming to my talk. <clears throat> my name is Colin Erig. Um, I'm an engineer at Joint. Uh, the title of my talk is Tests Are Greater Than Types. Um, it kind of all started with the following tweet. Um, so this happened, I guess, one morning after struggling hardcore with the TypeScript compiler. Um, so th this talk is gonna you know, reference TypeScript a little bit, but really the same, the same comments apply to Flow or you know, any of the other uh, type systems that are out there. Uh, the, the tweet at the bottom got a lot of really interesting responses. Um, this talk is only about JavaScript in 2019. It's not about Python. It's not about automobile collision testing. Um, I got a lot of really, really fun responses for this one. Um, and a couple disclaimers. I do know that you can use types and tests together. And yes, I have used type languages before. And I do not hate TypeScript, so let's get that out there. Um, so in general, I think types are great. So they can catch some of the bugs in your application. Um, they make refactoring your code a lot simpler. Uh, they can be used to do things like auto-generate docs and API contracts, things of that nature. Um, IDEs really like types for auto-completion and things of that nature. Personally, I would love to see types get into JavaScript. I don't know how feasible that is, but I would love it. Um, and big companies use types. So the thing about big companies using types is that you generally should not do something just because a big company does it. Um, just because Microsoft and Google are all aboard the, the TypeScript train doesn't mean that you need to do it. They have problems at a different scale than you have. Um, they, they just kind of operate a little differently. But uh, what, are, what is actually really great are tests. So tests can also catch some of the bugs that are in your programs. Um, tests can also, especially if you make 100% code coverage, make refactoring your, your code a lot simpler. Um, and then if you do something like add a types file, the, the .t.ts uh, file, then that kind of covers the rest of the bases as far as you know, the IDEs and the, the docs and API contracts. But I mean, with all that said, I think a lot of the popularity of these, these type languages is that it's a nice segue into JavaScript for people coming from languages like Java and .NET. Um, just by a show of hands, how many people here use TypeScript, Flow, or any of the others? Um, and then keep your hands up if you love them. Okay. Um, so a lot of people are like, well, why not just do both? And you can do both. Uh, it's generally better to do both than, than one or the other. Um, so if you can do both, if you want to do both, then, then go for it. Um, don't let anything I say stop you. Um, but then can I also see by a show of hands how many people have heard the there's not enough time to write tests before? OK, yeah, so lots of people. Um, this is more common, especially among uh, project managers and managers than than we'd probably care to admit. I've heard it you know, a number of times. I worked at a, the first company I worked at out of college had no types at, or no tests at all. Um, so, so I know about all the struggles and the pain. Um, and, and adopting TypeScript isn't necessarily wrong or bad, but it's, it's a trade-off that I don't think a lot of people think about at all. You kind of just see, OK, Google and Microsoft are using TypeScript, so it must be the right thing to do. Um, but there are some drawbacks to the types. So they add a lot of verbosity and complexity to your, to your code base. Um, so the, the, I guess, real world example that I'm drawing from is I've done some contributions to uh, Google's gRPC library for Node.js. Uh, they have hundreds of lines of code that are nothing but uh, type interfaces and type definitions and things of that nature. Um, because gRPC is a, is a framework, it has to handle a lot of generics. Um, a lot, they have multiple different types of requests that you can make, so it, things get kind of hairy pretty quickly. Um, types also add to your initial development time. So whenever your manager says there's not enough time to write tests, it's like, is there really enough time to write types either? Um, and this all assumes that you don't take the easy way out. So anybody can, can adopt TypeScript any, 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 all the way down, and you're now using TypeScript. Um, it's not really that much different from JavaScript, though, at that point. So one of the problems is that TypeScript is a language 
that is transpiled to JavaScript, so you're, you're still deploying JavaScript. Um, and a language is a really big dependency to have <laughs> in, your, uh, in your node modules. So basically, anytime you take on any dependency, you're basically inheriting all of their bugs. And with TypeScript, you're inheriting quite a few here. Um, I think I checked today, and it was actually a higher number than the, the 3,500 shown here. But this is um, down in the, the snippet at the bottom is an actual code review that was going on. Um, I don't know if you can read it or not, but basically it introduced a util.isNumber check before calling number.isInteger. Um, and so in the code review, I was like, no, I don't think you need to do that. And the response was, well, TypeScript wasn't happy, so it's there. And then I linked to the, the issue that I found. Um, and so TypeScript and any of these other things actually impact the code that you're shipping, a lot of times in a good way, but also sometimes in a not so good way. So you're actually writing less efficient code here because TypeScript wants you to. Um, and then another example from the same code base, uh, all I was trying to do was loop over all the existing HTTP2 sessions and destroy them. Uh, seems simple enough. I called HTTP2 session.destroy with, uh, with just the error code, and TypeScript complained. So I went and I checked the HTTP2 docs. It's been there since version 8.4, um, using like 10 or 12 or something at this point. So. The, the method is there, the supported signature is there, but for whatever reason, the type definitions are wrong or out of date. Um, if they're out of date, they're still wrong. So now you have this pretty simple piece of code where you actually have to go in and add some, com some comments explaining what's going on because of TypeScript, and then the third comment, you're actually, you actually have to modify your linter setup to accommodate these bugs. Uh, so that's just you know, something else to, to keep in mind. And then finally, it kind of sometimes propagates all the way out into your, your documentation and the API that you're exposing. So if you go to the, the gRPC uh, readme file on NPM, you scroll down, this is actually part of the, the readme. Uh, so you know, the public API of this library follows semantic versioning with some caveats. All right, that's all good. Uh, some methods are prefixed with an underscore. OK, that's, I mean, TypeScript has private stuff, but uh, whatever, that's pretty common in JavaScript. But then you get to the second bullet point. The class call is only exposed due to limitations of TypeScript. It should not be considered part of the public API. Um, and that's, that kind of confused me a little bit because, first off, I know from personal experience, anything that you put out there as part of your API, even if you say this is not part of your, the public API, people are going to use, and they're going to be really upset whenever you break it, and you know, it, it just happens. Um, next, I wanted to talk about some of the, the hidden costs of transpilation. So these are two add functions. One's written in TypeScript at the top. The second one is written in JavaScript. Uh, the TypeScript one is shorter, so it must be better. Um, and then at the bottom, what happens whenever you call add with a number five and then the string four? Um, so with TypeScript, you'll get a compile time error, and you can go in and fix it, and, and life is good. Uh, with JavaScript, there's, there's not really a compile time, so you have to add this extra code in there to kind of catch these things at runtime. Um, again, you know, TypeScript is awesome. TypeScript wins here. Uh, but then when I take my add, my add function and I put it in a module and publish it to NPM, um, I'm publishing JavaScript. So anybody out there who's using JavaScript is now going to get the wrong behavior when they pass in five and the string four because all that type checking goes away and you end up with the wrong result of 54, the string 54. Um, and on top of all that, if you didn't have a build step before, now you do. So it's just even more complexity. I know if you're doing like front end work, you probably already have the build step anyway. Um, I do a lot of back end work and I like to, to try to just stick to vanilla JavaScript if possible. Um, so you know, your mileage and tolerance for these things might vary. And then you're still going to have to write tests. So you, you, know, you didn't have time to write tests, and you didn't have time to write types, but you wrote, you wrote your types anyway. Um, and then you found out that the static types can only catch a small percentage of your bugs, so you have to go in and you have to write you know, real tests. Um, the static types also don't verify your functionality. Uh, static types don't prevent regressions. These are all things that, that real life tests will catch for you. Um, tests can catch everything that types can, but the inverse is not true. And then if you haven't already checked it out, um, I would recommend Googling for the TypeScript tax. 
it's an interesting read. Um, the conclusion, so learn how to read, write, and especially debug vanilla JavaScript. Uh, it's what you're running in production. It's, your life will be a lot simpler if you do it that way. Uh, use tests and a linter to verify what your application is actually doing. So in my opinion, a linter, good tests, and a, a types file can actually you know, give you all the same results as taking on this, this dependency on a separate language um, without having to write a bunch of tests other than your type file, um, without introducing a build step, and you know, without having to do your debugging via source, uh, source maps. That's all I've got. Thank you. <laughs>